Hello, fellow Daz Studio enthusiasts. This is Not From This World, and I want to welcome you to my tutorial series. This week, I would like to talk some more about customizing your characters and making your own unique character that you can use anytime you want and even share with other Daz users. Now, I have made a video in the past that has gotten a lot of attention, and I'd like to thank you for that, but in that video, I showed you how to customize characters. Well, I'm going to do something very similar tonight and perhaps even make this a little bit easier than my first video. And how we're going to do that is by utilizing this tab in Daz Studio called the Shaping tab. Now, I have several characters set up here to kind of go through this and show you how we can customize. Uh, to the left here, I have just a Daz Genesis 8 base figure. Then in the middle, I've got my Milica figure. And then to the left of Milica, I have a Genesis 9 character, just to kind of compare and contrast them. Now, I have seen other tutorials that talk a little bit about the shaping tab, but I feel like they just don't show everything and they leave things kind of incomplete and they leave me questioning things. So I thought I would give a crack at this shaping tab to try and explain it perhaps a little more thoroughly. Now, first of all, the shaping tab is right below your parameters tab. So our parameters tab is where we do most of our work and I know you're familiar with that, but a less used tab would be this shaping tab. And this shaping tab is gonna open up all of the dials for your character's morphs. And so what's pretty cool about it is it'll open up all the morphs that you've downloaded, any morphs from characters that you've purchased, they're all gonna be in this shaping tab. So for example, I have Milica here selected and I am going to go to the shaping tab and I'm gonna make sure that she's selected and you can see that in the shaping tab, we have all of these subfolders that we can select to customize Milica. So you can see we have actor and then it says head, face, eyes. Now, if I click on one of these like actor, it's gonna come up with dials. Some of the dials look like little boxes, which I have to admit looks a little bit weird, but other tabs are gonna be just like what we're used to seeing. Now in Genesis 8, I have a lot of things purchased and I've downloaded many characters and I have a lot of different morphs. They're all going to show up when I select a subfolder. So right now I have face selected and you can see I have all of these different morph dials that I can use to change the way Milica looks. Now, just for your reference, you're gonna have some that are the same and you're gonna have some that are different depending on what you've purchased. However, these dark red tabs are the Genesis 8 tabs that just come with the character. So all of your Genesis 8 characters are gonna have these tabs. And we can start to manipulate them and change the way that our character looks. So for example, this one says chin width. See if I zoom in here to Milica, I can change the way that she looks by sliding these dials. See, so if you look, I'm rounding her chin off, things like that. Now, what's really cool is if we have our character selected in the shaping tab, I'm just gonna go click on her again. I can go to currently used, and when I click on currently used, it's going to give me a list of all the dials that Milica has that's making her Milica. And so, I've purchased Milica, so her body and her head are all selected to 100%. If I moved these down to zero, 
like let's say I take Milica's head and I slide that down to zero, you can see that I just turned Milica to the base figure. And so all of her morphs that make her who she is, is set up in this currently used. So that's pretty cool. You can kind of play with that. You can zero out things and then start playing with your character. So we can select all of these different attributes of our character and then just start manipulating them. So her head, her face, her eyes, nose, mouth, ears, hip, legs, feet. You kind of get the picture, right? So a lot of this is going to be just kind of playing around with it. So I think the, the big thing to remember is these dark red tabs are going to be universal for Genesis 8. Now, if we look at Genesis 9, she's going to be the same way. So if I select our Genesis 9 character, she's going to have these same tabs. Now, I don't have as many morphs uh, for Genesis 9 that I have for Genesis 8, so my list of tabs will be smaller. But if we scroll along, the light blue tabs are going to be Genesis 9's default morph tabs. So all Genesis 9 characters are going to have these blue tabs. So we can manipulate Genesis 9 the same way we can manipulate Genesis 8. So I wanted to just show you this because I didn't talk about it in my first character morph video and this shaping tab can really come in handy if you want to narrow things down and play around with customizing characters. Okay, so to have a little fun here, I have my base Genesis 8 character and I've just cloned her so we have two identical versions of our character and we're going to go into the shaping tab and we're going to morph one of them and make them look a little different. So let's say for example that we have this character and we want to make a younger version of her for a scene that we're going to create. We can just go in and start manipulating this character using her morphs. So I'm going to select my Genesis 8 female and I'm going to go back to my shaping and we're going to um, select the subfolder where the face is and we're going to start playing around with the shape of her face and then kind of change some things so that she looks different and then I'm going to show you how to save this. One of the things that you might ask is, well, if I want to make a character, should I use the face transfer? And I have been playing around with face transfer for a little while, and I'm going to make a tutorial about face transfer too, and we're going to see how well that works. That would be for creating a totally custom character or trying to create a character from a real life person. We're not really going to do that in this tutorial. We're going to just change the character and make her a little bit different. In this case, we're going to make her just look perhaps a little bit younger. All right. So look for a face transfer tutorial coming up, but that's not what this is. All right. Back to our character. I'm going to select her face. And one of the things that we need to think about when we're trying to make someone younger, for example, is they're probably going to have a more rounded face. So I'm going to select the dial and uh, change the shape of her face just a little bit. So I can take this cheek size and I can kind of round out her face just a hair. Now, another thing that makes someone look younger is their eyes. Your eyes are one of the only things that don't grow. You're kind of born with the same size eyes you're going to have, and then you kind of grow into your eyes. So if we want to make our character look younger, one of the easiest ways to do that is going to be making her eyes bigger. So I'm going to scroll until I find eye size, which is right here. 
and we're just going to enlarge her eyes slightly. We don't want to go too big. Like we can go like alien big, but we don't want to do that. We want to make her just have some slightly bigger eyes and that will make her just look a little bit younger to begin with. We're also going to manipulate her nose a little bit. I think I want to make her nose a little bit wider. What's really cool about this is you can just play around until you get what you like. And if you don't like it, well, just go back and undo what you did and keep working with it. Another thing that I think might work well is if we just change and make her a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go out of the shaping, go to parameters. Let's scale her to about 97%. All right, now we're starting to um, kind of manipulate her into a younger figure. I go back into my shaping. What else should we change to make her look a little bit younger? We could make her neck a little bit longer if we want. We could make her neck shorter. There's just unlimited things that you can do. One thing I should mention is as we scroll around, you're going to notice that all of the characters I've purchased all of their head morphs are listed under the head. So we can, you know, give her a Milica look if we wanted to. All we'd have to do is just scroll down until we find Milica. And we could make her look like Milica if we wanted to. Or more like Milica. Maybe a relative. Something like that. See, here she is right here. Here's Milica's head. So see, if I start changing that dial, I can really changer boy she looks much younger actually with milica's morph in place but you get the you kind of get the picture what i suggest is that you just kind of play around with this and uh have fun now a lot of you might be thinking okay now we don't have a lot of change but i hope you can see that we we do have some changes and i could play around with this for hours uh, if you're making a character you probably will but uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can save your character. So now that I have my character created, we have like a young version of our base figure. I'm going to save it. So I've zoomed in to her and we're gonna remember that that's in camera two. I'm gonna go to camera one and kind of zoom out and we're going to get rid of our other characters because how we're going to save our character so we can use her over and over again is going to be saving her as a character set and we don't want anything else in our scene to do this all right so i'm going to go back to my camera too and I'm going to take my figure selector and I'm going to come up here to file save as and we're going to come down here to character preset we're going to select that and I'm just going to name this young base figure all right now where I'm saving it is in my Daz Studio library. It says Daz 3D Studio, my library, presets, and then characters. And you can see I have already done this with a Milica character. So I'm gonna save this young base figure. And when I do this, it's gonna come up with a um, tab. If we look at it, everything looks good. We're just gonna hit accept. And it's gonna save our new character so that we can use her in other scenes. All right, let's see if this worked. So I'm gonna go to a new scene. Let's see if we can find our character. So I'm gonna go to my content library. I'm gonna go to my Daz Studio formats. We're gonna drop down, go to my library, uh, go down to presets, hit characters, and then there she is. Now, you noticed I zoomed in when I saved it so that her picture is the icon so you have to remember that any time you want to save something in daz move your camera up to the picture that you want as your icon and then when you save it that's what you're going to see you can see i messed up with this one and i have these two characters milica is one of them but i have these two characters and so i don't really like that icon this time i did a good job i'm just going to open her up 
and she should be the same younger character that we just created. So she's loaded, and she loads with nothing, you know, no hair or anything, just like a normal character. So I've zoomed into her face, but to show you that she is the one that we manipulated, if I go to the shaping tool with her eyes, under eye size, see it's changed. It's now at 40.5%. So we have uploaded our new character. So now I have this younger version and I can add clothes to her, you know, give her whatever hairstyle, but she is now ready to go. Okay, well that'll about do it. I don't think I'm gonna run a render today because I don't have Milica set up, but don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. I'd love to hear what you have to say and happy rendering. Until next week, take care.